you got to compete. How do you compete? Well, you have to be creative. You have to be creative. And if that means you have to figure out how to work the commission side of the business, if that means you have to figure out how to work the marketing piece of the business, you have to get it done. Because if you are not getting this listing, let's say at one and a half percent or 1.75% or 2% or 2.5%, I'm talking about on the list side, somebody else will. And somebody else will sell it and they will also help them with the purchase. And they're also gonna be able to list another house or two or three if they leverage this listing correctly. So one listing can make them 50, 60, 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollars. So that's something that you gotta take into consideration every time. And that, by the way, not only a for sale by owner, that's any seller out there. Because let's talk about really reality here. How much time are you really truly spending on getting your listing sold? Right now, especially right now. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, 10 hours, let's say 15 hours. Even at $5,000 commission check, you divide that by 10 hours, you're still making $500 an hour. That's a lot of money. So why not be creative? Why not be aggressive? Why not go out there and dominate a neighborhood, dominate the subdivision, dominate in listings? Because you know, especially the way the market is right now, you put it on the market, right? You close your eyes, you open your eyes, and it's under contract, multiple offers. Okay, any, any questions before we continue, guys? Far away, guys. Let me see the chat, see what's going on. Oh, okay. Email. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll send that over to you guys. Okay. Uh, any questions, guys? No. Okay, let's continue. All right. The second lead source that you definitely want to be focusing on right now, and it's not really for now business. It's more for a long-term business. Okay, so for sale by owners, it's now business. Hey, I need to get a listing this month. I wanna get two listings this month. Great, for sale by owners, all day. But what about the future business? Because we all here for a long time. I mean, we're, I'm planning to do this for a long time. I'm sure all of you are professional realtors. You wanna sell real estate for many, many, many years, right? So the best way to go about it when you're trying to get seller leads and build a seller database is circle prospecting. Circle prospecting. Well, some of you may not be um, familiar with circle prospecting. Basically what that means, you can do it either with the phone, you can do it through door knocking, you can do it through their letters, okay? But, you know, I'm gonna talk about primarily uh, Phones. I'm talking about you generating a list of homeowners with their phone numbers, okay? And you're calling those homeowners, letting them know that either you have a buyer that is actively looking to buy in a neighborhood, or you're holding an open house and you're inviting all the neighbors to stop by the open house, or you just sold a house and looking to see if there's anybody else in the neighborhood uh, looking to sell and or buy. It's a very easy, very simple script, okay? The beautiful thing about circle prospecting is what you're doing is you are being preemptive. There's really not that much competition there. Like unlike for sale by owners or expires when their other agents are constantly calling them and trying to get their business, 
with circle prospecting, you know, you are calling them and seeing if they have any plans in the near future to sell their house. Okay. So there are a couple of ways you can go about circle prospecting. I mentioned about door knocking. I mentioned about uh, sending letters. Uh, it also helps you being uh, strategic in terms of increasing your presence in a specific neighborhood. If you're looking to farm a neighborhood, that's something that I've done in my neighborhood, right? Um, every time you hold an open house, you call your neighbors and invite them to the open house. Every time you listed a house, you call your neighbors and let them know that you just listed a house. Every time you close on a house, you call the neighbors and let them know. Okay, that will increase your presence in the neighborhood. Right now, the biggest, I believe, um, uh, challenge that a lot of agents are dealing with, and, and, and this is my agents as well, is they have a lot of buyers, but not enough homes to, 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 to really see or write an offer on. So there's a huge lack of inventory out there. So how can you stand out for your buyers? Well, you tell them, look, in addition to all of the properties that I'm gonna be sending you from MLS, right? What I'm gonna do for you, which most of the agents won't, is I'm gonna be calling the neighborhood that you're interested in moving into and letting every single homeowner know that I have a buyer, ready qualified buyer, that is looking to buy a house in the neighborhood. Imagine that. Think about it. And during that conversation, even though they may not be interested in selling their home, because you're gonna offer them a free market update that you're gonna send them on a monthly basis to really kind of help them to see what's going on in their neighborhood, okay? You're gonna be able to get their email address. You already have their phone number. So now you put that information in your database. You put that information in your database and what do you do with that information? Well, you utilize it. And how do you utilize it? By sending them content, educational, beneficial, useful content on a monthly basis. So when they are ready to buy or sell in this matter, because they've been getting emails from you for the last six months or for the last 12 months, do you think you're gonna have a chance that they're gonna call you? Yeah, you're gonna have a chance. They may call somebody else, but there's also a good chance they may call you and say, you know what, Eric? You know what, Adrian? I've been getting stuff for you for the last six months or 12 months, and I appreciate you sending me all these market updates. I'm thinking of selling my house. Can you stop by and take a look at it? Give me a price on it. Think about it, guys. It's not that difficult. The pitch, the script is very diff. It's, it's easy. I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you right now. Ring, ring, hi, uh, is this John? Hey John, uh, this is Alan with Best Homes Real Estate. The reason for my call is because I'm working with two active buyers that are looking to move in into your neighborhood. And I was just wondering, I mean, you know the market is hot right now. There are not enough homes on the market. There's only like 6,000 single family homes currently active on MLS. I was just wondering if you know anyone in your subdivision that is thinking of selling their home. That's the pitch. Oh no, I, I, I really don't. I don't really uh, associate with my, with my fellow neighbors. Okay, no, listen, I completely understand, I get it. Uh, what about you? Have you considered, John, selling your home in the near future? Well, you know, uh, Mary and I were, were kinda, kinda thinking about it. I, I got about, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking more like about a year ago from now or a year and a half from now. We make a, make a decision that, Okay, well, I, I appreciate that, uh, John. But before I let you go, just out of curiosity, what has to happen between now and a year and a half from now 
in order for you guys to be ready? What has to happen? What needs to happen? Well, um, I, I, Mary is going to be retiring, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, semi-retired. So uh, Mary's going to retire, and then uh, we're going to have to sell it, uh, going to downsize it. Oh, okay, so you guys going to downsize it? Yeah, we're going to downsize it. Okay, great. Are you going to be buying in the same neighborhood? Uh, no, no, not really. We're actually going to be moving to, to Colorado. Oh, uh, what's in Colorado? Who's in Colorado? Uh, well, our family, our kids. We want to be closer to our kids. Boom. Now you got somebody who said, you know what? Not now, but a year from now, a year and a half from now, I am going to be ready to sell and buy. It was a two-minute conversation, not even that. So now you have a potential seller in your database. Okay? And here's what you're doing, guys. You're building a seller database. That's what you're doing. You're not building a buyer database. Anybody can build a buyer database. We right now generate Facebook leads, online leads for a dollar to two dollars a piece for our agents. For a dollar to two dollars a piece. Anyone can generate buyer leads. I'm talking about seller leads. And unlike expires for sale by owners or even farming, there's really not that much competition. So where do you get this data, you may be asking. Again, going back to Mojo. In Mojo, they got something called neighborhood search. Okay, where you can do it, uh, a free form plotting, radius plotting, street search. You can display properties on a pin. Uh, you can do even things like uh, absentee homeowners. Here's another niche, absentee homeowners. With everything that has been going on with COVID, with moratoriums on evictions and forbearances on, on, on the rentals, there are absentee owners that haven't been collecting rents for the last three to four months. What do you think they're gonna be doing when they can sell this house? Oh, they're gonna be selling their house. So why not be calling them? You can call vacant properties or only free and clear properties. Again, this is available for an additional fee for Mojo. And by the way, I'm not here to promote Mojo. I'm not getting anything from Mojo. This is the tool that I've been using for the last seven years. And our agents are using it as well. Jason Pyle is asking me, do you know if there's more accurate than the uh, uh, geo leads or from Red X? I don't know. I mean, I, I used to use Red X a long time ago. My biggest uh, issue with Red X was the fact that the numbers were just not that accurate. So um, they're not going to be that, like, you're probably going to have about 50 to 60% of numbers are going to be accurate. Another 40% of them are, are not. They're not. They're not. And that's okay, but that's, that's just part of it. I mean, you know, I don't think there's gonna be a tool out there or a product out there unless you pay arm and a leg that we're gonna get you all of the phone numbers that are accurate. Okay, a couple other questions. Um, uh, Darren, I think it's Dor uh, Darren, um, 40,000 agents in the Valley. Uh, yeah, I mean, more like close to, I think it's like 40,000 plus like 13 or 14,000 brokers. So altogether, I think it's like 53, 54,000 agents. Uh, a lot of competition. Uh, Mona Sanchez, what is the lowest uh, discount uh, you can give? On, on, on the, honestly, it's, it's, it's completely up to you, right? And obviously some of you um, are with the brokerages that may possibly uh, not be happy with it, whatever, I get it. Um, Here's how I see it, okay? Like right now, if I'm going and I'm competing against other agents, okay? I will even say something along the lines like, look, I'm gonna list your house for 1%. And if I sell it 
in the next week or so, you just pay me a 1% listing fee. After two weeks, if we don't end up selling it, after two weeks, I'll increase my listing commission to one and a half or 2%. And after a month, if we don't sell the house, I'll increase my listing commission to two and a half or 3%. And it's fair. It's fair to the seller and it's fair to me as well because the more time I sit on this listing, the more time I'm gonna spend on it. Now you may ask, well, what do you pay the buyer's agent or selling agent, right? Uh, Co-broke. It's completely up to the homeowner. Completely up to the homeowner. They can pay him a flat fee. They can pay him 2%, 2.5%. It's up to them. My listing fee is X. What you pay to the selling agent or co-broke, it's up to you. Okay? So when you structure it that way, when you have that conversation with them that way, look, my listing fee is only 1% or 1.5% instead of 6%, or five and a half percent, and then you have to explain to them that you're only making two and a half percent, and the other two and a half or three percent is going to the buyer's agent. It just complicates things. Just go with the, what I list. This is my listing fee. Now, I had a conversation with a new agent, and he asked me, Well, Alan, I really, really want to get a listing. I really want to get a listing. I really want to get my business off the ground. I said, All right, go knock on the door. Use circle prospecting, get a listing, and then charge, don't charge them a commission. Just pay us a transaction fee. And then every day, right, in the agreement, in exchange for not charging them a commission, every day you, they agree, yet you hold an open house. You hold an open house every single day until you sell the house. I guarantee you, you're gonna get one or two, maybe possibly three leads that are gonna use you not only to sell their house, but also buy a house. So even though you don't make any money on the listing side of it, you're gonna make money on finding two or three or four buyers, or possibly sellers, that are gonna be working with you and you're gonna make your commission. It maybe sounds a little bit radical, but you know what? Again, we are all 1099 independent contractors. We do not get a salary. We do not get an hourly wage. We have bills to pay. We got car payments, we got mortgage payments, we have rent payments, we have kids. So if again, if you're not getting that listing, Somebody else will, period. Mark my words. Okay. Okay, uh, Jason Pyle, uh, he uses Mojo. I use uh, Geo Leads, but the accuracy is only about 20, 30%, and then half the numbers are DNC lists. Yep. Like 15 good numbers for every 100. So I was wondering if it was better. No, again, we do not call the, the, the ones that are on DNC. Again, this is not perfect okay but it's better than something it's better than nothing that's the way i look at it what you're doing by the way jason or what your friend is doing 99.9 percent .9 of agents are not doing we're not doing that you're not doing that most of the agents are not doing this this is something that you want to do especially if you want to build a seller database so let's go behind the numbers. Okay, when it comes to circle prospecting. Let me just close this. Okay, so our, not, our, our, our goal is to get one nurture per hour. So if you call for about an hour or so, okay, for you to get one nurture. A nurture, a definition for a nurture for me is someone who's looking to sell or planning to sell in the next 24 months. 24 months. Somebody that will give you their email address or not even email address, just a phone number and says, hey, you know what? Call me back in about uh, a year. That's a nurture. Okay, you get five nurtures per week if you do it every day for five days, Monday through Friday. 
That's 20 nurtures a month. That's 240 nurtures per year. These are the seller leads in your database, 240 of them in a year. And from my experience, let's say 10, oh, let's say be on the conservative side, 5% of them decide to list with you in the next 12 months, that's an additional 12 listings. An additional 12 listings. So 12 listings, 80% of them, let's say sell. And again, this is a conservative number. Most likely this number is more like right now, 100%. But let's say it's 80%, all right? We're being super conservative because this market is not gonna continue. There's gonna be time when it's gonna slow down. Okay, so that's 10 homes sold out of those 12 listings. And then 80% of these homeowners are also going to be buying it with you. They're purchasing with you. And let's say the average price is 250, which again, this probably right now is more like 350. Okay, we're talking about an additional two and a half million dollars in sales that you can generate a year. So if those sellers, eight of them, buy a house with you, and again, the average price, we make it very simple, 250, that's an additional $2 million in sales. So two and a half plus two million, that's four and a half million dollars in sales, okay? With a potential gross commission income is $135,000. Think about it. What can you do with $135,000 in your pocket? What can you spend on? How's it gonna change your business? How's it gonna change your life? Your finances? And that's, again, we're talking about one nurture per hour, we're, we're spending, dedicating one hour a day. I'm not talking about 10 hours a day. One hour a day to get one nurture. And by the way, I'm not even taking into consideration all of the other businesses or potential revenue streams from open houses, sign calls, referrals, online leads. So this number can be 200, $250,000. And don't forget, you still have over 200 sellers in your database. They're still getting stuff from you. You're still following up with them. You're still nurturing them. You're still sending them real estate market updates on a monthly basis. They're still in your ecosystem. Think about it. This is a game changer, by the way. Again, most of the agents are not doing this because they're focusing on now business, which by the way, you should be focusing as well. You gotta pay the bills now. But I gave you two options to work with for sell by owners, now business, circle prospecting, long game, future business but you gotta do them both. You gotta do them both. Again, if you need a script for, for this, um, I'll share it with you, I'll send it to you guys. Um, that's, that's, that's gonna be included. Um, what's your pitch? We already kind of covered that. Um, very simple, you know, hi. Name John, my name is Alan. I'm working with a local family who's looking to buy a home in your neighborhood. Have you thought about selling it? That's your pitch. Okay. Uh, any, any questions about this? Before we continue. Fire away guys, this is a big, big, big slide. It's a very important slide. I really believe in circle prospecting. I know sometimes it's almost kind of looking uh, for a needle in a haystack, I get that, but guess what? I'm not asking 
for you guys to have like five or six seller leads, you know, a day. I'm talking about just find one nurture that said, you know what, we're thinking in the future. There's my information. Okay. Some of the uh, notable uh, circle prospecting listings that I have sold, um, including this one right here that is sold for $2 million cash. We listed for 2.2. We got an offer for 1.8. We're able to come in the middle for $2 million. We closed it in 45 or 60 days. We got it on the contract under 30 days. It's right here on 67th Avenue and Pinnacle Peak in Glendale. This was a circle prospecting lead that I worked for about a year. I met with a seller three times. He met with two other well-known, they're not only agents, but they also broker owners. This was about two years ago, two and a half years ago. But at the end of the day, I was able to earn his business without discounting commission, by the way, because he felt I will be the most aggressive out of the two other ones, out of the three, to get his house sold. And I also was very honest with him because I said, look, I never sold a $2 million house. Hell, I never sold a million dollar house, but I'll make sure that I work tirelessly on your home, on your listing every single day. It's gonna be a trophy listing and I will do everything on my end to get it sold. We got it sold. The biggest commission check that I got, $60,000 in one shot. That was from Circle Prospecting. And there are many other ones that I listed and I sold from Circle Prospecting. So Circle Prospecting definitely works, okay? Okay, uh, let's continue. All right, guys, so the next one I wanna to talk to you about will be um, neighborhood exclusive open houses. Neighborhood exclusive open houses, something that I started about two and a half years ago, two, two and a half years ago in my farm. Um, and they lie, they, I mean, it's amazing the amount of A, traffic you're gonna get from the neighbors and B, the amount of seller leads. If you are looking to generate traffic from the homeowners in the neighborhood, if you're looking to maybe possibly um, expand on your, uh, on your farm or get into starting a farm, maybe a subdivision neighborhood, hands down, you have to do neighborhood exclusive open house. Uh, how is it different from traditional open house? Well, uh, the objective is to really get neighbors involved. We are purposely, tactfully, uh, tactically inviting neighbors to come to your open house. To your open house. Okay. How does that help you? Well, first and foremost, it helps to showcase the listing because not only okay, you're marketing this listing outside of the neighborhood, but you're also now strategically marketing that listing to the neighbors in the neighborhood. It also showcases you as an agent that does things differently, okay, showcases and promotes your brand. If you have a team, your team leader, your team, and all of your marketing efforts. Okay, ideal is going to be a new listing, something that just hit the market. So it's not really uh, been visited by many homeowners. You did not hold any other open houses. This is gonna be your first open house. Also very important is to make sure that interior is, is nice because you want people to stick around. You want people to linger. You want people to give high praises of the house, okay? The sign placement for these open houses are not gonna be outside of the subdivision, but inside of the subdivision, inside of the subdivision. Again, this is a focus on the neighbors or inviting neighbors, okay? A must, you gotta have food and beverage, food and beverage. That's what will make them to stay, to stick around, okay? I'm gonna show you the samples of the food and the beverage uh, that we provide. Uh, you gotta set it up really nicely inside and out. Um, you'll probably need help. And what I mean by that is that you're gonna have a lot of people in the door. You gotta have somebody. Partner up with another agent. Uh, if you got an assistant, have an assistant there. 
you know, have a lender there, maybe a title rep there. You got to have at least one, maybe two people with you. When I hold these open houses, I have anywhere between three to five additional agents with me. Why? Because when you get about 30 people at the same time or within like an hour time frame, that's a lot of people. Okay. The daytime is Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. Why do I prefer Thursday? Is because I tried Friday and Fridays are dead days. By the way, I would never suggest you hold an open house on Fridays. It's just not a really great day. People are usually check out. They don't want to think about anything else except going home, having a glass of wine, uh, a bottle or two or three of beer, and just relaxing or going outside maybe to the restaurant. Okay. As far as choosing your open house, you got to choose them carefully. Um, vacant versus owner occupied. Ideally for uh, exclusive open houses, I like owner occupied homes because they show better. There's a place to sit. Um, I like to be in a higher price points because that's the type of a uh, seller and buyer I want to attract to my open houses. Nothing against a two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars seller, but you know the way the market is right now, it's hard to find them something. Okay, we put out twenty to thirty signs inside. Uh, um, uh, curb appeal is important. Uh, updates inside are important. We talked about that. Um, preparation. Uh, that's something that uh, we we discuss. Preparation. So let's talk about that. Uh, plan ahead with the open houses. Make sure you do your homework when it comes to uh, uh, the neighborhood. Uh, make sure that you print out everything that was sold in the neighborhood, uh, what's currently under contract, uh, pending, closed, temporarily off the market. The reason we do that is because we want to make sure that um, you prepare. When you have a conversation with a homeowner, when you have a conversation with the neighbor or even a buyer, okay, you want to know everything as much as possible about that neighborhood. You want to know all the pluses about the neighborhood. You want to know the average price point in the neighborhood. You want to know the average days on a market in the neighborhood. You want to know all of that. The more you know, the more confident you're going to appear. The more confidence you're going to feel. So you definitely, and by the way, this is not only for a neighborhood exclusive open house. For regular open house sign, uh, open houses that you're going to be uh, holding, make sure you prepare and plan ahead. Plan ahead. So this is uh, a picture of, um, of the open house setup that we do. Um, so it's nice, it's nothing too expensive. For instance, this platter right here, we get from AJ's. Um, it's about $100 or $120. You can have your lender chip in. You can have your title rep chip in. We usually get about four to five bottles of wine. Again, nothing expensive, maybe eight, nine, 10 bucks each. Uh, some crackers that will be included, uh, little bottles of water, um, and some utensils, and, and, and that's it. And you will have people somebody you decided to unmute themselves. Let me see if I can figure out who that is. Got it. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so um, what we do is we want to make sure that the food is there. Food is included. All right, food will make them stay. Drinks are going to make them talk and share their plans, their, their, their goals, uh, uh, what they like about the neighborhood, what they dislike about the neighborhood, right? Very important to have this. 
And they're usually going to stick around for half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, two hours, sometimes three hours. Sometimes, my gosh, we even finish seven o'clock and then they invite us to, our, to their house. But out of this right here, we usually generate anywhere between five to seller, uh, five to 10 nurturing seller leads. Okay. They give their information, they give their phone numbers, they give their time frames, they give their motivation, all of that stuff, all of it. All right, this is uh, an open house that uh, we did in Arrowhead where one neighborhood exclusive open house generated three additional listings, not only in the same neighborhood, but on the same street, like back to back to back. We even had some of the homeowners neighbors calling us and asking us, you know, what's going on? Is everything okay with the neighborhood? Is everything okay with the street? You know, so, but this is just an example of the open house um, that we held a neighborhood exclusive open house where we picked up another three listings. All right, so how do we get traffic? Well, we, we ideally want to start something, uh, you know, maybe a week or two before. We want to take professional pictures, obviously. We're going to work on a marketing collateral. We're going to record the invitation video. We're going to invite people over. All of that stuff has got to be done a week or two in advance. That's very important. We put out 20 to 40 open house signs. We door knock and personally invite um, closest neighbors on the same day of the open house. We circle prospect the neighborhood via phone or door knocking a day or two, inviting people over. Okay. Now, a lot of this unfortunately had to change because of uh, the new regulations from MLS. Right now, we just do everything without promoting it or boosting it on YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram. We do that a day before um, the, the listing goes live, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. We wanna get you in trouble. Let's go into the chat box. Okay, from Marisol, uh, I want to go after higher and high uh, homes, but I'm scared because I feel it's a completely different market for me. I need to know that I need to do it different for that kind of, absolutely not. You don't have to do anything really different when it comes to uh, focusing on a higher market. Uh, at the end of the day, what's important is really you because they're choosing you, okay? Your knowledge, your expertise, and what you're gonna do to sell their home. When I listed a $2 million house, I told him right up front, and he was able to look up my numbers, I did not sell anything above a million dollars. I told him this up front. And the two other broker owners specialize in the high-end stuff. He chose me because of my passion. He chose me because of my drive. He chose me because I told him, I'm not going to be like another agent that you interview that has seven or eight of them in his inventory. I'm going to be the agent who's going to have only one, and that's you. I'm going to put all of my time and effort and focus on you, on your listing. Now, uh, some of the nice higher end marketing materials help. Don't get me wrong, we have those in a brokerage you can utilize. Um, um, also, I shot a, a beautiful video. It was a two and a half, three minute video of the entire property. I paid close to three and a half thousand dollars for that video. It's an amazing video, right? But that's something optional, you don't have to do it. But everything is right here, honestly speaking. Our biggest competition, our biggest competition is not other agents, is not the other way of selling things, it's not even higher on prop properties. Our biggest competition is us. And more importantly, our limiting beliefs. Our limiting beliefs. You can sell higher end homes. Anyone here can sell higher end homes. Start with holding open houses in the neighborhoods that sell higher end homes. That's something that I decided to do about four years ago uh, when I started farming my neighborhood because I wanted to be in a higher end home. 
And in my neighborhood, in, in, in the farm where, where I do farming, the average price point is around 550, 600,000. Okay, Lindsay, um, have you used apps like Nextdoor for circle prospecting? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Circle prospecting, Nextdoor. What I suggest you do also is um, create um, a group um, in, uh, on Facebook, right, for your subdivision. For instance, um, this is the conversation I had with one of my agents, Alberto. He lives in Tartesso in Buckeye. And I told him, create a group called Tartesso Living and it start inviting people from Tartesso to that group. And that group is going to be everything about Tortesso, not just real estate, but everything about Tortesso. You can do exactly the same thing for your subdivision. Okay, Jason, got to take off, but thank you for the free information, Alan. You bet, man. It was my pleasure. Okay. All right. So how do we get traffic, guys? So we talked about that. Marketing collateral, by the way, most of this marketing collateral, as far as the printing goes, the title company can provide you that. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Um, ask them. I'm sure they have it at their disposal. If they don't, uh, connect with me and I'll, I'll introduce you to the title company that we work with. Um, open house uh, conversion system. Uh, I think this is the biggest one, whether you're doing a neighborhood exclusive open house or you're holding a, a, a traditional open house, okay? Here's what happens a lot of times. Uh, we get somebody in... Um, you know, register or fill out a feedback sheet, right? And then um, what do we do with it? We follow up with them maybe a day from now or two days from now, we send them an email, um, we'll send them a bunch of properties, right? It's not, really, it's not really urgent. If you really wanna start converting open house leads at the higher level, these are the steps that you gotta implement in your business, these are must. Okay, once you get the lead at that open house, you put that lead in your database. You send them properties right there on the spot, whether you're using MLS or using a CRM, we use a couple of different CRMs, we use Commissions Inc. and KV Core. Both of them will allow you, enable you uh, to create custom searches for, for your buyers very quickly. Okay, so you send them a couple of properties right away, again, that day. Okay, you send them a text with your video. All right, thanking them for stopping by at the open house. Again, it's a selfie video. You don't have to edit it. You can put a filter or two, that's fine. And basically the video says, hi, Jim and Donna, thank you so much for visiting my open house. Make sure you give the address, uh, 1234 East Main Street. I very much enjoyed meeting you and your family. And I'm looking forward in earning your business. Oh, by the way, I just emailed you a couple of properties that I think are going to be a good fit for you guys. Please take a look at them and let me know if you want to go and see them in the next day or two. That's a video. You text that video. And the reason we do that is because it's much more personal than just sending them an email or text message. Because don't forget, if you're holding an open house, a traditional open house, right? You're not gonna be the only open house in the neighborhood. You're probably not gonna be the only agent they're gonna, they're gonna speak to that day. So after about two or three agents, everybody kind of sounds the same. If you think that you, le you left a lasting impression, you'll be wrong. So the way you refresh your mind, and again, use the more a personal approach, is the video. And then you follow up with them again that day, you follow up with them 30 to 60 minutes later, confirming that they received the A, the list of properties and B, schedule an appointment to see the home or a buyer consult, consultation. So this has got to be part of your routine, whether you're doing a neighborhood exclusive open house or you're doing an open house, traditional open house. This is something that you got to definitely do. You have to do it. That day. Not the day next or two days later, that day, okay? All right, let's continue with farming. All right, farming. Um, I started farming in 2016. I really truly believe in farming. I'm a huge proponent. I'm like, I'm a huge believer in farming. I think if you really want to build a good solid business, uh, a listing business, right? 
um, especially the one that, that you're gonna like enjoy, right? Nothing against circle prospecting or nothing against for sale by owners or even calling expires and cancels. Well, you're, 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 you're constantly calling. You're, you're gonna get rejected, right? You're competing against a bunch of other agents. So it's not really the best way, if you will, to do this for the next 10 or 15 years. So what I did is after I was able to generate some income for myself, not in my first year, not in my second year, not in my third year, but in fourth year, I started farming in a neighborhood. I started small and then right away quickly started increasing, okay? So what to look for in farming? Well, first and foremost, you don't wanna make sure that you wanna make sure that the agent that is currently farming the neighborhood is not really um, dominating the neighborhood. In other words, not doing more than 10% of the business in that neighborhood. For instance, if there are 100 homes and then, home, and, and then 10 homes sold in that neighborhood and he's doing 20 of those, or, 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 or I'm sorry, if he's doing about two or three or four of these homes, then obviously it's gonna be a challenge. So top, uh, top agent deal situation is less than 10%. And turnover rate is, is, is more than 5%. Also, you want the average commission check to be in excess of $10,000 or more because of the ROI. Um, what we do is we use bi-weekly jumbo uh, branded postcards. Uh, we used to use the neighborhood uh, uh, newspaper, not anymore. And then we really um, hold a lot of open houses, a lot of open houses with neighborhood exclusive open houses and then the traditional open houses. So in 2016, uh, my first year, I spent about $65,000 in total um, in my farm and I generated $90,000. So I was profitable in year number one. Last 12 months, we spent about $72,000 and we generated uh, $170,000 in gross commission income. Uh, again, very profitable. That, that's not even including um, the sign calls, um, open house leads that my agents generate, that's not included here. This is direct income coming in from my farm. Uh, what works uh, will be the social media presence uh, in addition to sending out postcards. What also works are gonna be open houses and circle prospecting. So when you guys are farming, it has to be in the concert. It has to be all together. By just sending out postcards like these, okay, these postcards, it's just not enough. It's not enough. 99.99% of these postcards are gonna end up in the trash within five seconds. But that five seconds, they see my face, they read my message, call to action, they see the house that I sold, that's five seconds or four seconds, whatever it is that is required to make sure that my name is constantly there. But what really is gonna help you or take you over the top, from my experience doing this, is going to be open houses, it's going to be social media presence and also circle prospecting. So if you can do all of those things together, including sending out postcards, okay, uh, I would say probably in about three to four or five months, you start getting phone calls. The key thing you have to remember is that you have to have a budget for farming. You cannot do this willy-nilly. You cannot do this on a shoestring budget. You cannot do this for a month or two and then forget about it. You gotta have at least six months, ideally, ideally uh, a 12 month budget, ideally, okay? So a couple of other farming tips. Uh, I use MLS data to see how many homes have sold in the neighborhood. I use USPS EDDM to mail out uh, these uh, postcards. We also use uh, a flyer delivery service uh, that actually uh, does it for us. And uh, what we do is we, we farm them every two weeks. Now, to start a farm, and this is very important, if you are planning to start a farm, you have to do this 10 straight weeks. Like every week, you got to send them something. Well, you can send them just listed. You can send them just uh, sold. You can send them a market update, right? Um, by the way, the just listed, just sold doesn't have to be for that neighborhood. If you sold a house five miles away or 10 miles away, put that picture of the house. It doesn't have to be a house that you sold in the neighborhood. Okay, kind of keep that in mind. Um, after you establish and you're, you're starting getting some traction, you're getting some phone calls, then you can start uh, shifting to bi-weekly mailers. 
Uh, again, you have to have a budget of at least six months. Uh, the key thing is you got to stay consistent. Like this is a long game. Like again, for sale by owners, open houses, that's something that you can get right now, business, farming, circle prospecting, that's a long game. That takes time and takes lots of money. But guess what? Once you get it established, you can list five, six, seven, 10, 15, 20 homes a year from your farm. And most of those sellers are also going to be buying with you. And then also you can leverage those listings by holding open houses, by getting sign calls, advertising them online. So it just, it just really kind of snowballs. Okay. Uh, any questions about uh, farming guys? Before we continue. No, oh, we got somebody. Okay, Carol Oliver, uh, great tips. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, thank you. All right, guys, let's continue. Uh, your database, this is a, a big one. Um, I generate a lot of my business right now from my database, whereas four, five, six years ago, that was not the case at all. But I got a big database. I got close to 500 uh, clients in my database. Um, but I constantly stay in touch with my database. That's very, very important to me. Um, all of this right here, you can implement. It's not that difficult, right? Sending them monthly postcards with the just sold, the ones you're sending to a farm. Great, awesome. Uh, sending them monthly real estate market update video, it takes you literally three minutes to do that. You can do it. Sending them monthly uh, CMA using HomeBot, um, Again, that's automated, that's done on a monthly basis. Quarterly giveaways, wishing them happy birthdays, Valentine's Day postcards, Thanksgiving pie giveaways, that's something that we do, right? This is where you're really, really gonna make the money is going to be calling them. Calling them or texting them, ideally calling them and checking on them at least once every six months. Especially right now, when everything is going on right now, call them, check on them, ask how their family, ask how they're doing. If there's anything that you can do help to help them with, let them know, right? And I tell you, here's what happens. When you call them and you're being genuine, you're just asking them, hey, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. I want to make sure you, you guys are fine, right? Most of them, most of them will ask you, how's the market? Most of them want to know what's going on with the market. And that's going to be your segue. That's going to be your opportunity to now talk about what's going on with the real estate market. Okay. The same goes with all of those buyers that you worked with a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, the ones that you helped to buy a house. The market has improved, increased, call them check on them, educate them on the market. I'm sure if you sold a house two years ago, they probably have at least 10, maybe possibly 20% equity in their house right now. Maybe they're looking to get into something larger, something bigger. This is a great opportunity for you right now, guys. And this is something I teach to all the agents that are trying to get their business off the ground or those Asians are kind of feel like they're stuck. They feel like they can do better. They feel like there's more to real estate than just what they're doing. Okay, my number one, the number one thing is like call five people a day from your sphere. Talk to them, check on them, ask how they're doing, offer help, educate them. Send them a thank you card after the conversation. So five conversations a day, five thank you cards a day, including your business card. I'm guarantee you, you're gonna get people that are gonna say, you know what? We are thinking of selling, we're thinking of moving, or I know somebody who's thinking of selling or buying. All of the other stuff you can do, but start with this. And by the way, return on investment is huge because essentially it's your sweat equity. It will not take you more than an hour a day to do this. An hour a day. Most of it here, you can systemize it. 
you can have systems in place. If you have assistants, they can work on this. You can help you with this. But think about it. An hour a day will generate a 30 times X hour Y for sure. For sure. Because at the end of the day, our number one currency as a real estate agent is our ability to continue our relationship, relationships with the, with the clients, our number one currency, period. If we're not doing that, well, somebody else is. Somebody else is sending them stuff. And that's something that we gotta definitely focus on. Our SOI, our past clients. Okay, any questions before I continue guys? Oh, um, Joyce Martin asked, what is a market update video? It's a real estate market update where you update them on what is currently going on in the market. Typically what I would do is I will pull up data from a Cromford report and I will let them know how many homes have sold last month in Maricopa County or in Metro Phoenix area? What was the average sold price? What was the average uh, price per square foot? What was the average days in the market? How many active homes that we have on the market right now? Um, and um, you can be very granular uh, and, and focus on, on your neighborhood or your zip code. It's a two or three minute video that then you can email to your database, you can text to your database, it's completely up to you, but that's something that you wanna do on a monthly basis. Okay. Again, when we talked about the circle prospecting guys, all of those nurtures that you're getting in your database, like they should be getting that real estate market update on a monthly basis. That's one thing that they will find beneficial or useful or of a value. They wanna know what's going on with the market. And coming from you, it's gonna basically make them feel like, you know what, this is an expert. This guy or this gal knows what he or she's talking about. All right, so let's talk about the lead conversion and follow-up. I'm gonna go pretty quickly because we are kind of running out of time. So when you have leads, you gotta classify them differently. Not every lead is created equal. You're gonna have leads that are ready to do something very quickly, immediately in the next 30 days, so we call them A leads. There are also gonna be leads that are gonna be more like 60 to 90 days away. There are nurture leads or B leads. And then we also have watch or C leads that are more 90 days plus, okay? For every lead, you gotta have a different follow-up sequence. Now, the cool thing about our CRMs that we use, we use Sync and we use KB Core, a lot of it is already there. You can actually create yourself or you can copy the follow-up sequences that already come with these two uh, CRMs that we offer to our, our agents. Here's the biggest thing, I think, when it comes to the follow-up. For some reason, a lot of agents are struggling with follow-up. And I think it's not only because they do not have the right systems in place, but it's also, I think, is mental. A lot of times they feel like they're gonna get rejected, maybe possibly even get confronted, by a potential buyer or seller, especially when you're calling for sell by owners, expired, cancel listings, right? Um, and to be honest with you, it, it should be really further from the truth. You should not feel like you're gonna get rejected and confronted, okay? I have a saying, and I, and I, I joke this with my agents all the time, um, as long as you're not gonna get a restraining order, you, you're good to go. You're good to go. Continue to follow up. The biggest, I think, honestly, um, uh, mistake that the agents are making is they're not following up enough. They're not following up enough. And I'm not just talking about following up, I'm talking about following up and bringing value to the table, offering something to them when you're having a conversation with them, okay? The cool thing about the CRMs right now is a lot of the follow-up can be done by the CRMs. They can text, they can email, right? There are auto campaigns, there's AI, right, in place that can help you with that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, nothing will replace you having conversations with people. Nothing. 
every single deal that I have closed in the past seven and a half years were the results of me contacting the lead, contacting the buyer or the seller, period. Every single one of them. If you're not talking to people about real estate, if you're not contacting them and educating them about real estate every single day, your business is gonna go through ups and it's gonna go through downs. It's gonna be very inconsistent. And if you're afraid of contact, if you're afraid to talking to people, well, most likely you're not gonna be in a business, period. Your number one currency is you. You developing relationships with these leads, with these buyers and sellers and your clients in your sphere. So you gotta be constantly talking to them, contacting them. The same goes with your leads. We generate thousands of leads. The problem that I have, honestly, is that we do not have enough agents working these leads. But some agents do not even work those leads on a consistent basis. But think about it. Every lead can potentially generate a five, seven, 10, 15, $20,000 commission check for you guys. And one client, one client can connect you to two, three, four additional clients. I have several clients, not one, not two, maybe four or five clients that in the last five or six years bought and sold my gosh, eight to 15 properties with me. And these are not, by the way, investors. These are the people that are buying and selling, they're referring business to me. Like we're talking about over $100,000, $150,000 in gross commission income from one client. So you gotta treat every single lead, okay, that it's going to be your client for life. And it's gonna generate a lot of money for you. But you got to work them correctly. You got to have systems in place. So for instance, anything that is a hot lead, anything that is ready to do something in the next 30 days, you got to follow up with them as often as possible. No less than every seven days. 60 to 90 day leads are going to be every two weeks. You got to have that system in place. Put it in your CRM. The leads that are 90 day plus or they're more 120 days plus, you follow up with them once a month. Again, calls, market updates, thank you cards. It will take on average anywhere between 15 to 18 follow-ups on some of these cold leads, some of these for sale by owner leads, expired leads, circle prospecting leads, online buyer leads. It will take a long time for you to get an appointment sometimes. That's the reality of it, but you gotta do this because if you're not gonna do it, somebody else will, okay? Any questions before we continue, guys? Okay, all right, let's continue. So now you have a listing appointment, all right? So what do we do? Okay, you book the listing appointment, um, you know, you're all excited about it, and you're like, oh man, what do I do next? Okay, so here's what I do, okay? So with the listing appointment, I right away will send them an email, I will send them a quick video, just thanking them and looking for a meeting with them, and in the email, I will include a cover letter, I will include information about me, uh, explanation of our uh, home buying and home selling guide, and everything that they need to know about my company. I do this in the email, and I also have a, a portfolio, a pre-listing packet, where I put all of this information in that pre-listing packet. And I will then deliver it myself, or I will have a courier who will deliver it for me. The reason we do this, the sole purpose of this is because we wanna make sure that the seller is educated and has all the information that they need to make a decision ideally before they actually meet with me. The more information you provide in your pre-listing packet, the better you're gonna fare, honestly speaking. What I do not include in a pre-listing packet is going to be the CMA. I do not do that. That's something that we discuss when I meet with them. 
So the next step is once I emailed it to them, and then once I delivered it to them, so I do both, I email and deliver. I will follow up the next day and I will check and see A, they have received it, and B, they had a chance to review it. If they have not reviewed it, I ask them nicely to review the pre-listing packet. I want them to read it. I don't want to spend too much time going over it when I'm there. Okay? So what you put in a pre-listing uh, 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 pre packet is, uh, again, we talked about uh, uh, meeting agenda, client testimonials, um, all of this stuff that we just discussed right now is going to be included. I also, again, do a video. Okay? This is the breakdown or list of all the things that I include. Uh, cover letter uh, with the business card, uh, marketing pieces about you, explanation of the home selling process, just sold postcards, newspaper, client testimonials, or 200 step action plan uh, delivered in a portfolio box. Okay. Let me see, let me check the chat box. Lindsay, what info should I share and send to clients that I worked with to inform them that I have changed brokers? Um, just share with them that you changed teams and brokerage, um, information about brokerage, information about our team. Um, and you can, again, ideally what I'd like to do is call your past clients, call your sphere with this announcement. Again, the way you want to start is asking about them, about their kids, about their family members, how they're coping with everything that is going on out there, right? And then basically kind of say, hey, by the way, this is what I'm doing. Okay, but as far as the actual information, an email, um, uh, a link to our website, Alan K. Team website, Best Homes website, uh, a link to our Zillow page, um, I can, I can send you a bunch of other things. Okay. All right, guys. So when you get to the listing appointment, all right, this is important. What I do is I shut everything off. Like I do not listen or like listen to the, to the news. I'm not answering my phone. In fact, I put my phone on silent when I'm driving. I'm not texting. I'm not calling. I usually put a music on and what I'm doing right now is I'm really kind of thinking and envisioning what I'm going to go through during my meeting with the seller. I don't rush. I try to be there five to 10 minutes early. If I'm too early, I'm just sitting in the car, getting myself prepared. When I come out of the car, I ring the doorbell or knock on the door and I'll usually will take a, take a, take a step, step back. And the reason I do that is because again, I don't want to be overbearing. I don't want to be overreaching. I don't want to be standing on top of somebody. I want to take a step back. Okay. I will then ask them if it's him or her. So if, 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 if a gentleman answers the, uh, the door, I will ask, Hey Jim, how are you? Um, instead of assuming it's Jim, you know, the reason I do that is because I want to make sure it's Jim and not his son or his dad. Okay. I ask to come in. Okay. That's another permission that I will ask was like, Hey, you know, can I come in? Absolutely. Great. Then the next step, what I do is it's very important is I look for a place to put my personal belongings. Now, not just the place, but I look for the table, whether it's a dining room table or it's a kitchen table. That's where I usually put my stuff. Okay, a very small talk. And then I ask them to show me the house and touring the house with them. I usually have a notebook with me. I have a notebook with me. Okay, I have that notebook with me. And I write down the things that they're telling me or sharing with me about the house. This is very important. I do this every single time. Even if I know the house, I know the model, I know what they have done, they told me over the phone, I don't care. I'm writing things down. Even though there's not that much to write, I'm still writing things down. I'm writing questions to ask. Now, this is not the time 
Okay, this is not the time for you to start uh, voicing your um, opinions uh, or your views or displeasures on the things around the house. Not the time. Okay, um, this is the time really for you to walk the house, but more importantly, uh, develop a rapport or continue to develop a rapport with a husband and, and, and a wife. Okay. So, When you walk in the house, try to find something in common, whether it's, it's pictures, whether it's activities that they like to do, hobbies, try and something, find something in common, okay? Give compliments, make positive comments. Again, high energy, dress to impress. This is not the time to be negative. This is not the time to pinpoint on things that they need to do, improve, whatever, no. This is the time for you to develop the rapport. Okay. Also, what's important is during that touring process, this is the time for you to ask them about their experience with other agents. Because they probably have experience with other agents. They maybe had the house on the market before. They may be currently interviewing another agent, right? This is the time for you to ask, hey, you know what? Um, how's your experience been with an agent before? What did you like about the agents that you were working with before? What you didn't like about the agents that you were working with before? Notate. It's very important to ask that question because if they tell you, well, we liked him because of communication, but we didn't like him because he didn't know what he was doing marketing wise, you gotta write that down. So when you're actually doing a presentation, you can focus quite a bit on the communication piece of it. Also, as a follow-up question, it's important to ask them what they're looking for in their next agent. What are their expectations of their next agent? Again, it's important because we, when we have a conversation with them, we can definitely focus on those one or two or three things that are important to them. So if they tell you, well, I wanna make sure that the agent sold in this neighborhood. Now you gotta be thinking about, okay, I gotta talk to them about this neighborhood. If they tell you, well, I want to make sure the agent is constantly communicating with us. Well, we need to define what the constant communication is like, and then obviously set the expectations with that. Well, we want an agent who's going to be flexible on his or her commission. Okay, now you got to discuss the commission piece of it. But if you're not asking those questions, you don't know what they're actually thinking and what they're expecting. So those are the questions you definitely got to ask. Also very important, I believe for me, is, um, and for you as well, is who's actually doing the talking? Who's actually the alpha? Like, who's the leader? Is it a wife? Is it a husband? Like, who's actually the decision maker? Because that's the person that you're gonna be focusing on most of your time. You also gotta figure out which personality type are they? Like, like are they like high D, right? They're like, like impulsive cut to the point, right? Let's get it done. Are there like high C, very analytical, asking a lot of questions, taking their time? Are there high I, right? They like to talk, they like to chat, they like to like, like share everything about themselves, what they did with the house or high S, right? They're more like kind of like, you know, they're, they don't like a change, you know, they're taking their time as well. Like, like so you gotta be, uh, very mindful of what type of a personality you're, you're working with when it comes to the seller. Okay. Listing presentation. Give me a second. Let me, let me get my power cord quickly, guys. Okay, much better. Before I continue, uh, any, any questions, guys? Lindsay. Okay, I think we discussed this already. We, we covered this. All right. Okay, listing deck. I always, 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 always have a listing deck with me. Now, do I always use it? No. In some cases, if I'm working with my sphere, 
if I'm working with somebody who's very familiar with me, with the marketing that I do, I will not use it, okay? But if you're going there for the first time, if you're not familiar with that individual, right, or you're trying to impress that individual and showcase the differences between you and other agents out there, you got to have a listing presentation. You have to. By just sitting there and, and chatting with them about uh, their family and, 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 and talking about the price and talking about what you're going to do, it's just not enough especially when you're competing against two or three or four other agents, top producing agents, you got to have a listing deck. Okay. Um, the listing deck that we have, uh, it, it shows the difference between me and the other agents out there. Differences between the marketing that we do versus the other agents. Okay. Um, a pricing strategy covers that. Um, it, it, it really kind of focuses on everything uh, as far as what they need to know, what we're going to do for them uh, once we get the listing. A lot of times, homeowners, sellers, they don't really truly understand what we're doing as, as the listing agent. They think, oh, you know what, we just put it you know, on the market, take a couple of pictures, put a sign outside, and that's about it. There's much more to it. There are many more intricacies in the world. And that's something that we have to explain to them, ideally by showing it to them using the listing presentation versus just having a conversation with them. More visual, the better it is. What really helps me is, again, we use a pre-listing packet that covers a lot of this stuff in detail. So if they had a chance to review it, they had a chance to read it, that really kind of saves me quite a bit of time. That's why it's so important for you guys to have your own pre-listing packet. Okay, very important to demonstrate your expertise by knowing your market stats and being prepared. Uh, knowing your comps, uh, I, I think, look, I mean, you gotta know the comps. You're going on a listing appointment, you gotta know the comps. Um, if you don't know the comps, man, I mean, it's, it's a problem. And, and here's what you gotta do, okay, when it comes to knowing the comps. And these are some tips that I wanna share with you. When you're pulling comps, make sure not only you pull active homes, uh, UCB homes, spending homes, but also the ones that are expired and canceled. And the reason we want to include expired and canceled is because we want to show them not only what actually worked, in other words, the, what the price worked, and, but also the, 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 the properties that were overpriced and did not sell and they got expired or they got canceled listings, right? So you want to make sure you have that as well. Um, tip number two, when you're pulling comps, always stay with a subdivision um, to get the most accurate price analysis. I know sometimes you go outside of the subdivision, that's the risk that you want to take, but explain this to them during your presentation, right? Tip number three, when um, pricing houses, make sure you're comparing one-story houses uh, to another one-story houses, not, not two-story houses. And then the same goes with the average size. You don't want it to be more than uh, 15% uh, difference in, in the size. Um, that, okay, most common seller objections. This, this, this is a big one right here, guys. Um, honestly, like objection for me is an opportunity to really kind of get to the bottom of it and, and really close the deal. Like this is the way I treat an objection. Objection a lot of times more is, 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 a, is a smoke and mirrors. It's more like a front, right? There's a big difference between an objection or a condition. But let's focus on the objections, right? The biggest one you're probably gonna get is I gotta think about it or I gotta sleep on it. That's one of the most common objections you're gonna get there, right? I gotta think about it. And here's how I reply to that objection, right? How I respond to this objection. Say, hey, you know what, I completely understand. I know it's a big decision on your end. You and Mary obviously have been interviewing quite a bit of agents and it's a big decision. So if I may ask, do you feel like I'm the right agent to sell your house. Do you feel like I'm the right agent to sell your house? Oh yeah, well yeah, Alan, yeah, we, we feel like I'm the right agent to sell, uh, uh, you're the right agent to sell our house. Okay, um, well, please be honest with me. Uh, and again, I, I just really, you know, I spent about an hour with you guys and I appreciate you guys. I believe that I can get the job done of selling this home for a top dollar. But please, please be honest with me. What is holding you back from making a decision right now. What's holding you back from making a decision right now? 
please be honest with me. Is it a commission? Is it the marketing? Is it me not selling enough homes in your neighborhood at your price? What is it holding you back right now in making a decision? By you asking that question, the goal is for them to give you an honest, uh, uh, you know, an honest feeling about why they're not making a decision right now. And it can be commission, it can be marketing, it can be, um, there's another agent involved. It can be whatever it is by you asking that question, what is really holding you back or stopping you from making a decision right now? Your goal, your hope is for them to give you the answer. You will learn the answer. Okay, so let's say for instance, they say, well, it's your commission, Alan. It's your commission. Okay, uh, fair enough. I, I, I completely get it. Uh, obviously, uh, it's quite a bit of money and, and, and we're going to be offering quite a bit of value to you guys uh, in, in marketing and selling and, and managing the entire process. But let me ask you this question, uh, John and Mary. Assuming that we agree on a commission structure, assuming that we agree on the commission structure, Do you believe or do you feel like we are the agents to get your home sold and can earn your business today? Assuming we can come up with the commission structure that will work for both of us, do you feel like we can get the business from you today or get the agreement signed today? or have your commitment, whatever words you use, or have your commitment to move forward today. Oh yeah, Alan, I mean, yeah, what do you have in mind? Well, let me ask you this, what do you guys have in mind? I already shared my, my commission structure with you. What are you guys thinking? Well, Alan, we really wanna be uh, netting X amount of dollars, and it looks like with your commission, we're, we're, we're gonna be a little bit short, and, and, and you know, as you probably know, um, uh, we're also gonna be buying a house, I said, okay, well, um, so let me, let me do this, okay? Uh, if you were to buy a house with me as well or with my team, okay, I'm willing to adjust my commission just for you. So if we can get that down, do we have your business? Yeah, if we can get that down, you have our business. Great. Let's sign on the down line. Okay. So that's a commission objection. Another one is going to be like, how are you different from our previous agent? This is usually is asked if you have not done a good job of presenting your case to them ahead of time by not including a pre-listing packet, by not doing an actual presentation. This is the question you're gonna get. How are you gonna market your home? The same thing, if you did not include what you're gonna do for them, if you did not speak to them about it, they're gonna ask you this question. How many homes have you sold? That's another one if you're a newer agent. If you're a newer agent, I teach my agents, especially the ones on a team, you use the word we, we have sold, we have sold. By the way, you can do that exactly the same thing. If you're on a team, if you're on a brokerage, you can use we as a brokerage sold X amount of homes. Okay, but you're going to have these objections and, and your job as an agent, especially if you're going to be focusing on the listings is, is really get down and, and hone in and dial in when it comes to these objections. And by the way, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be times when you're not going to have an answer. And there are going to be times even you handle that objection perfectly, they're still going to have to decide or think about it or pray on it. It's gonna happen, that's part of the process. Just to kind of give you the numbers, you know, I wanna put it in perspective for you guys. In the last seven and a half years, I probably went on 700 plus listing appointments. And I only listed probably about 300 or so, maybe a little bit more. So I listed less than 50%. 
And then when you're dealing with expired listings or canceled listings for sell by owners, um, that number is more like 20%, 25%. That's a reality. So if you go on four listing appointments with expires or canceled listings, right, for sell by owners, I mean, if you're really good, you're gonna get one, maybe two, but most likely one. So don't feel bad about it. Don't get discouraged. Don't feel like defeated, but that's just numbers. That's how it works. But every day as sales professionals, and I call you guys, not only real estate agents, but sales professionals, our job is to work and improve and get better at our skills. And that's what I teach. How do you get better when you out there, when you have that opportunity to get that half a million dollar listing or $1 billion listing and you're competing against another agent that's been in business for 20, 25, 30 years, you can get that business, you can get that listing. And the way you do that is working on your skills. Okay, some of the closing deal questions. I usually ask, okay, hey, are you guys ready to start showing your home? Are you ready to start showing the home? Another one we talked about in the previous slide. Assuming we agree on a commission structure, do you feel like I'm the agent to sell your home? Assuming we agree on the marketing strategy, do you feel like I'm the agent to sell your home? Obviously, you gotta have the paperwork ready. That's very important. Um, so we get the paperwork, uh, we put the checklist together, all of that, again, um, everything's got to be standardized. Everything's got to be systemized, right? Um, this is obviously the time for me, at least, and this is something that you want to implement in your business as well, is when they sign that listing agreement, this is when you ask them for a referral. So you ask them for a referral right there. Then when you get it on the contract, you ask them for a referral. At the close of escrow, and 20 days after the close of ask you ask them for a referral. So you got the listing. Now what, what do we got? Uh, tips and servicing the listing. Um, we got a listing coordinator that helps uh, us quite a bit. Um, so a lot of it is systemized. We have checklists. Uh, we have a, a, a tool or a platform that we use called uh, Brokerment uh, that helps us not only for the listings, but also transaction management. Very critical guys, uh, when you get a listing, um, I know the market right now is hot, but when it was not hot, you definitely wanna make sure that you uh, call them uh, on a weekly basis to let them know what's going on. And then every 30 days, if the house does not sell, you wanna give them a, a market update of their neighborhood. Um, same thing with the contract to closing. Uh, client gifts and ideas. These are type of gifts that I give to my clients. Uh, really nice baskets. And then what I also like to do and my agents like to do is uh, when they go and uh, give uh, keys uh, to uh, their clients, to their buyers or even sellers, we hold a big sold sign. And then we blast it on, on social media. Okay. So let's, uh, let's finish up by, by, talking about three key steps to take uh, your business to the next level. Um, it's a 90 day action plan. By the way, this is the 90 day action plan uh, that I um, offer and, and actually share uh, and we talk about with the agents that come and join not only my team, but also a brokerage, right? What we do is we sit down, uh, we go over your challenges in your business currently we go over the things that uh, you're not taking advantage of, the opportunities that you see in your business that you're struggling uh, to take advantage of. Then we, we, we talk about where you see your business going in the next 12 to 24 months. And then we're gonna map out uh, the next 90 days and ultimately your next 12 to 24 months in terms of what you gotta do, not only on a daily basis, but daily, weekly, monthly, as well as 90 day quarterly basis to get your business either A, off the ground, or to take your business to the next phase or to the next level. That's something that I offer. Um, you know, we have something called right here, 90-day um, momentum roadmap that all the agents in a brokerage have access to. It's a, it's a, it's a really nice guide, um, you know, that we can definitely share it with you guys if you're interested. 
but um, you know, the cool thing about it is we want to make sure that with this 90 days, there are three steps. There's got to be a discipline to start. I shared a lot of stuff with you right now. And I'm not expecting you, and I don't think you should be covering all of these lead sources. Absolutely not. Pick one, maybe two, ideally one, and start really working at it. Chip away every single day. Every single day, try to get better. You want to try for sale by owners? Focus on for sale by owners for the next 90 days. Really get good at for sale by owners. You want to focus on farming? Do that. Your sphere? Do that. Try with one, start with one, okay, and, and continue to grow with it, okay? A couple of interesting quotes that I share with my agents. Small disciplines done consistently lead to big results over time. Discipline is the bridge between who you are and who you want to become. Discipline, period. Discipline to continue, that's another um, topic by itself. I mean, I teach a class on that because here's what's going to happen in reality. After you take on a challenge for the next 90 days, after about a week or so, you're going to start questioning things. You're going to start questioning the process. You're going to start questioning what you're doing. Uh, after maybe 30 days or 60 days, you're going to start getting discouraged, feeling defeated. That's okay. That's part of the process. Okay. But you got to stay consistent. You got to stay patient. What really, really, really helps agents is to have either a mentor or accountability partner, somebody who's going to be there with you through the process. This is very important. If you're going to try to do this on your own, it's going to be tough because you will get sidetracked. You will start questioning things, right? And with us, what we do is every single uh, Tuesday, and some of our groups actually have it on Monday as well, is we'll have uh, self-directed group accountability meetings where you share your commitments to the entire group and then assign yourself an accountability partner that checks on you on a daily basis, okay? Don't take on too much. Start, if you want to be focusing on your sphere, start with five meaningful conversations a day with your sphere and five thank you notes or thank you cards every single day. If you want to start with circle prospecting, do maybe one hour a day or half an hour a day and get better and better every single day, okay? Or if you can start all of this right away, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really hard, okay? For, so, for those agents that are not in a brokerage, or those are the ones that are in the brokerage, new or into the brokerage. If you guys are interested, I'm, I'm free to sit down with you for half an hour to 45 minutes, whatever it takes to really implement your next 90 day momentum roadmap. Okay, it's, it's, it's a free package that, that I offer um, and there are no strings attached. Uh, some agents may think, well, you, you, you're, you're trying to recruit. Um, no, I'm trying to help. And if you're interested, and in, 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 in learning more about what we have to offer, we can discuss that as well. But my promise to you is there's not going to be a conversation about your brokerage. There's not going to be a conversation about my brokerage. Okay, the conversation is going to be about you and more importantly about your business and how we can help it to grow it. Simple. Okay, it's complimentary. Uh, there's no fee attached or anything like that. So if you're interested, Again, uh, put your, your information in a chat box, say I'm interested, and uh, we'll reach out to you and, and schedule time for us to, uh, to have that conversation, okay? And I believe that's about it. Any questions before we go? Okay, Andy, thank you so much, sir, for all the reminders. Okay, uh, you bet, Andy, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Okay, so we got, uh, it looks like uh, Joyce Martin. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna write this down because last time I did this and it didn't save the, the chat. So a lot of stuff that, you know, a lot of people, I just didn't work out. All right, guys. Um, anyway, all right. Thank you, Alan. Very valuable reminders. It was my pleasure. I'm interested. That's, uh, is that, C is that Soraya? Soraya. Okay, Soraya. Soraya, what's, what's your last name? Okay. All right, good. Okay, cool. 
All right, guys, anyone else? Okay, Marcelo. Go, Marcelo. Okay. Marcelo. All right, guys. Okay. Well, um, my... What I'm going to do is, everyone, I'm just going to put my email address. And if you guys are interested, okay, uh, you're more than welcome to send me a quick email or you can just uh, friend me on Facebook and send me a, uh, uh, a message that way. Okay. All right, guys, before we go, any, any other questions? Thank you, Alan. That was very illustrative. Thank you, Ari. I'm sorry, who was that? Ricardo. Oh, Carlo. Oh, it was... No, Ricardo. Uh, Carlo. Ricardo. Okay, got you. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you for attending. Um, and um, again, if you have any questions, if you need any clarification on any of this stuff, uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to help. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to send you guys a script um for for sale by owners as well as circle prospecting so you guys have that um and um let me know if you need anything all right thank you great Bye.